So just to step back in time, uh, and all that many months as I just said, um, the board gave uh, cabinet direction and your CEO to employ uh, people transportation information to initially come in and assess your transportation program. We have had the opportunity to work with the district back in 2015. I gave an initial assessment there, um, which gave the district a lot of challenges at a, at a tough time in your growth, I know. Um, and decisions were made that took you to an outside provider and then the district decision to bring transportation um, back in-house. That assessment gave a lot of challenges to the district to overcome, to make happen what has happened. Um, specifically in February, uh, uh, myself and team members spent some time with your uh, staff to assess your facilities, which needed attention, your fueling infrastructure, which essentially had failed, um, tooling up of your um, vehicle maintenance program, a fleet that at that time needed a heck of a lot of attention, frankly, uh, and a staffing uh, challenge. And uh, when I'm here, what I want to share with you now is with the exception of a couple of areas, we have tremendous success to share with you. Staffing was the largest. I shared with Mrs. Borth uh, earlier today that, um, and I almost hate to publicly state this, but you probably enjoy uh, nearly 100% staffing and your driving ranks over that of any neighbor around you. I'm not quite sure how you pulled that off <laughs> other than you had employees that wanted to come back and folks that want to be employed in business services and your transportation program here in the community. I suspect a lot of them live um, within the community. You needed a manager, a supervisor, which you recruited. Um, you recruited a sufficient number of drivers, approximately 12. I think you have another one in the making right now, and, and I understand in the last 48 hours you may need an additional driver if you grow by a, an additional route, we'll talk about in a moment. Uh, you recruited uh, uh, a transportation technician or dispatcher to assist um, with the routing and the dispatching and the support of drivers while they're out on the road. And you recruited back or certified um, um, the 12 school bus drivers that you have. Um, I do, you'll see that in red here, I've, um, oops, back up. Oh, yeah. oh, thank you. I was going to say, was I doing that? <laughs> <laughs> Note in red here, uh, you need one to two subsequent school bus drivers for backup. So what happens right now, the driver calls an ill, vacation needs to be off for an array of reasons, is it's going to require either the supervisor or the dispatcher to drive. And as an augmentation, that's not a problem. But if you get in a situation during the winter months when drivers, you have a higher number of absences or what have you, you'll want to have at least one to two backups. Admittedly, it's hard in a, in a smaller program to often provide sufficient number of hours of work to have a substitute uh, school bus driver, but you might be able to get creative with your m and uh, folks for their shared duties um, to help you along that line. And I think you're moving that direction from what I understand with um, at least one individual in um, training now, the uh, supervisor. Um, you established an initial 11 home to school bus routes uh, specifically for special ed, adding one additional bus route after the start of school. So as we stand today, I believe it's at a 12 um, uh, bus routes. And remember the goal at the time on a very short timeline was to reestablish services within the Menifee Union Elementary School District, uh, matching those that had been contracted out to outside services as a starting point. Currently, you're transporting 125 students. Um, I'd just like to comment on that. I, I don't want to go off in the weeds from my scope of the presentation tonight, um, but there seems to be an increase of students, which caught us a bit by surprise, assessing your numbers when we were on site for the initial program transition. So um, I'll have a recommendation toward that, toward the end of the program, but um, whatever is causing that growth, I think may be impacting the need for a 13th route, if I understand correctly. Uh, the district uh, students attending the RCO program sites contracted through uh, Hemet uh, USD. That was a recommendation PTI made to you back when we spoke earlier. Um, regardless who your external contractor is, it's not unusual and your um, 
a geographic layout up and down the 215 corridor, as I told you back in April, lends itself to cooperative transportation, whoever that may be with in the future to share in those costs. PTI does not recommend that it's in the district's best interest to dedicate a bus and driver or more uh, for those programs when you have so many districts around you needing to share in that transportation as well. We recommend an implementation of a special education transportation decision tree to help special education and transportation staff identify transportation as a necessary related service. And I threw this recommendation in because of my earlier comment here. We noticed in 2015 when we visited, uh, the district was slightly over the state norm in identification for students in your overall special ed population requiring transportation as a necessary related service. And it's an emotional issue that we could talk, probably talk hours on here, but it's also a business decision. And what PTI would suggest to you is the employment, and uh, PTI can uh, supply Ms. Gort with many examples in your special ed department of robust decision trees that help your program specialists and case managers assure that we're appropriately supporting kids specifically that need transportation support for their um, special needs. And, and again, I think that's why you might be seeing a little bit of a uh, increase if you're uh, identifying high, and that's just a guess on my part at this point, however. Your school bus fleet. I cannot um, stress with you enough, um, and I wanna recognize your maintenance and operations folks, your transportation supervisor, um, the two maintenance technicians uh, you employ. Um, I really stressed with Ms. Borth when we took on this project that I really recommended a year to transition this program. And uh, she explained to me the interest of the board in having it happen for the 2019-20 school year. And by George, under Ms. Borth's leadership and that team, you guys pulled this off. And in this next area specifically, you had a fleet that needed a lot of attention and you had a fleet that quite frankly, many units weren't worth the investment to repair. So monies apparently were identified and you purchased um, vehicles that you'll need to keep doing on a replacement program, but to uh, kickstart the program and I really commend you for that. In transitioning the vehicles back um, under um, Menifee um, supervision and maintenance, um, there was attention that needed to be given to those vehicles and my associate that lived with your team on site for many, many days gave a lot of specific attention to what those vehicles needed to your staff and without with the assistance of their hard work and outside contract work, uh, you pulled it off. Uh, California inspections performed on all Menifee buses to reactivate uh, under the Menifee Union High School District. This is your uh, CA DOT operation number. Uh, identified all buses, support fleet and equipment that required routine maintenance. That was over 65% of your individuals, your individuals, of your vehicles uh, that needed some level of immediate attention um, before you'd want to put them into operation this school year. Full implementation of the RTA fleet maintenance software. This was a large investment we know for the district, but we recommended it to you and it will carry the district well into its future. It's very robust. It can be integrated with other transportation software packages for routing, GPS, video technology, whatever the district decides it wants to do in the future. It'll provide you if the correct data is put in with your operational cost per mile and cost per pupil and cost per bus. Your 45 day and 3,000 mile safety check inspections required under uh, both California Ed Code and Title 13, all performed and up to date at the time of transition uh, for the start of school. And your state mandated child checkmate systems, actually a uh, majority of the buses, they were not working in when you received them back into the fleet and they're all working um, except for the possibility of one, I believe, not in operation as of the time school began. Identified and corrected maintenance discrepancies on all buses, prioritizing uh, safety discrepancies. Again, as the fleet was transitioned back, um, and we're pretty meticulous, we identified safety-related matters first, followed by routine preventative maintenance programs. Again, with the outside use of outside contract repair and the maintenance personnel you hired, you addressed the entire list. I mean, absolutely phenomenal. 
continuing on the school bus fleet, uh, currently the district has 35 school buses, unless some of those were retired out in the last uh, couple of weeks, I'm not aware of. 10 smaller special ed units is trying to give you a breakdown. But what I want to point out on this slide, it's probably the most important of this slide here, is that of those 10 smaller, they're 18 years of average age and 197,000. Your special ed fleet is where, as I told you in April, that's where the mileage will accumulate the quickest and it's where it can take you by surprise and the replacement areas. Now, you uh, kick-started the replacement of those buses very quickly. Sometimes the challenge is that when you buy, uh, it's a good thing, don't get me wrong, but sometimes when you buy a lot of buses at one time in a smaller program, that means those buses will come up more quickly simultaneously. So the board will want to give consideration to um, replacing additional units on schedule to make sure that doesn't happen, essentially. Eight larger gen ed buses mainly used for field trips. There's 62 passenger buses, but note they're, comp uh, they're uh, fueled by compressed natural gas. We're going to talk about that in a moment. It's a little bit of a challenge for the district right now. 17 larger gen ed uh, buses generally used for field trips. They're the, the larger 84 buses, also CNG with an average age of 13 years. You're doing fine on the large bus fleet side, okay? But you know, with the accumulated mileage you do. Seven special needs buses recently purchased. Do I have that number correct? Yes. Okay, so kudos to you guys. I think we recommended three or four at the time, but when we got into reviewing the fleet, you needed more than that, so nice job. Um, the CNG station compressors were not working as I shared with you in April. Um, uh, we, have, they, we obtained a quote, it shocked us a little bit. I believe that was nearing 300,000, that's an awfully big bite. I do believe that there's uh, South Coast Air Quality Management District um, grant funds that will be available to you to assist you in replacing that. That system essentially has failed. I know it's operational to some degree at the moment, um, but it is failing and needs to be replaced. Um, and that's probably one of the largest expenses you're headed for. Um, your outside contractor gave verbal agreement to maintain the CNG compressors for uh, one year, so that buys you a year. Take full advantage of that, hold them accountable while you're looking for other modes to um, finance a replacement. And we do continue though, uh, PTI recommends um, the replacement of those compressors as quickly as you can. Um, last we were on site, they were not working at full capacity. You could fuel your needs, but at a slow pace. Uh, and then we located um, one remaining bus uh, needing tank replacement. These are the CNG tanks uh, needing tank replacements under your grant award. And we were able to quickly get that in so that those funds could be used to replace the tanks on that bus, working with the uh, APCD. They were very quite gracious to the district. And the CNG tank inspections on all buses are current at this time, however, one bus is due for a CNG re uh, tank replacement here in October and 16 buses um, will be due for tank replacement in February of 2020. Again, they're um, historically, and I believe will continue to be um, AQMD and Carl Moyer funding opportunities to assist, if not fully cover, cover a substantial part um, of those expenses. And that last picture represents, I believe about 16 of your 17 or 18 brand new Menifee uh, Union Elementary Transportation team. And before I turn it over to you for questions, again, I just want to stress with you, um, I wasn't so certain when we would close out this project if I could stand before you and tell you that we had transitioned the full program. And you, sir, had asked me that question pointedly before I left the day uh, in April. And um, I have about six other clients right now, two of them going through transitions such as this very similarly. Both of them started before you and they're not even 50% along the way. And that is because of your dedication, your cabinet's dedication. Um, Mrs. Borth, if we told her on the project timeline this needed to be done, she held folks accountable and a very hardworking staff in the M&O and transportation, so they get the credit there. So with that, I'll address any questions you have. Thank you. Questions? I have a question uh, from the, the beginning of, of your presentation. You said you did a study for us back in 2015. Correct. All right, what was that study about? That uh, was performed under the Fiscal Crisis Management Assistance Team, FICMAC, and it was a dual study for special ed 
and transportation. So our portion of that would have been um, a, a standard scope, full review of your transportation program. Um, and then there would have been connectors in that study specific to the percentages of students being transported, be it special ed, general ed, field trips, et cetera. That's how I knew some of the special ed background. Okay, thank you. Mrs. Johansson? Uh, the fixing the bus that doesn't have the checkmate and that's out of use right now, is that happening right now? I think it already happened. Uh, we, so w whenever we purchased one of the new buses, it wasn't working, we sent it back. Okay, and then my other question was, the tanks that are due in February 2020, I think that you said we have grant or could get. You could, you could get, that? I can't speak with Oh, okay. certainty, but I would be very surprised if you couldn't get at least 50 to 80 percent funding based on the last 10-year historical picture under the South Coast Air Quality Management District, AQMD, and Carl Morrill funding. Um, and you're in probably the best air quality control district in the state for assistance and grant funding for alternative fuels under fleet, not just school buses, everything. And do we have a plan to pay for the rest, or like if that grant doesn't come through? Yeah, so actually what we're doing is, is, is kind of what Mr. Purvis alluded to, is we're looking at our entire fleet and seeing if we can retire some of the fleet that we won't need, and possibly even trade that in as we work towards purchases. And so whenever we went through um, the CHP inspection, they did require us to uh, certify all of our school buses, but we will then notify them which buses we're not going to utilize and then we wouldn't look towards the investment for those buses in the future. Okay. Um, with, when we went back on our own, uh, handling our own buses, do we still have any Hemet issues or any of the Hemet is issues outstanding as far as, I know there was a uh, radio issue, I believe, uh, equipment that they had, where are we with that? So we have in-sourced, we have control of our entire radio system. Um, we have our own routers. We were going to utilize Hemet's radio system as a plan B backup, and we still have access to that. Um, but we have, and we did receive all of our radios back, but we've upgraded. As part of our security upgrades, we've upgraded our radio system. Okay, yeah, I just want, like I said, I know there were a, more than a handful of issues that we were having when we were leaving Hemet. If all of those have been resolved, or do we still have any of those that are outstanding? For the most part, the, the issues have been resolved, and, and we have been able to resolve those either internally, through us fixing, and what Mr. Purvis was alluding to is fixing the buses that needed repair over 65% of them, or fixing the child check program. We had communication with him at, and when it came to a point at which we realized we needed to move forward, we moved forward and we were able to get everything done. Okay, are we looking at any cost recovery from them for anything that was done during the contract? Yes, so there is an aspect of which um, we are still negotiating that piece. But but we are looking towards cost recovery. Okay, thank you. Mr. Jenkins? Um, this is discovering what we need to do legally as far as we're required as a district to cover our own busing, correct? Mm -hmm. uh, the report here, this is all for special ed for anything that we're doing? That, that's correct. So we are only transporting those who are legally required to transport. Where are we at with, since this is done and well done, thank you, where are we at with looking at now the next step of busing as a whole for the district? So if we wanted to look at busing as a whole for the district, um, we, I hope, would first finish with the special ed, um, with the growth that Mr. Purvis was talking about. We did look at possibly needing a, a 13th route. We're looking at stabilizing our special ed population and our services to that population first. Um, if we chose to then bring back transportation for homeschool, we would need to establish um, board policy as far as the number of miles away from school, um, whether we do it by walk distance or as the crow flies, and then also establish a cost of which we would wish to charge for that service. I, I don't see that as something that we would be doing this, this fiscal year. Um, um, the, the amount of funds that we receive from the state for transportation are about $134,000. Um, the program that we're currently running and, and budgeted for for this school year is about $1.6 million. So it is 100, well, a large percent, 99% percent 
of this budget is financed through the general fund. Uh, if we were to increase that um, and not offset that through revenue, it would then, of course, um, eat away at the general fund, either revenue sources we'd have to identify um, or ending fund balance. I think this it sounds like we're talking about a lot of hypotheticals and we don't know. So it'd be good to go ahead and start and start looking at the feasibility of that and what it is and just to gather information so that we have information to chew on, to correlate put together and see what we can go from that. So at least we can, what is the cost, um, you know, actual cost? What would it look like? Uh, we can talk about trying to do board policy, setting distances and things like that, but we have nothing to start from. So if we have something to look at, what it would actually cost to do that, what would we you know, require for us, what would we require for our parents. Just so that we have that information, we need to start having those conversations. We can at least start gathering that information, I believe, this year, and not next year. We can start putting this together now, so we can at least start having those conversations, and then not, because we kick it down the can, you know, kick the can down the road for next year, it'll be three years, and then there's no reason why we can't gather information now to see what it would cost us start putting this all together. It's just information, right? If we do that then, then so we can start gathering that maybe, I would think at least by what I'm asking and throwing something out by the beginning of the standard year, January, February, something like that, this initial things. It's possible. I think that if we were to look for a full transition, um, we would probably do an initial study um, with a consultant to assist us in, in that aspect. Um, and then we can certainly look to see, you know, uh, cost benefit ratio and what the information is that we receive from this consultant based on their timelines as well. But we can we can certainly explore that option. Yeah. So what I would aspect is that um, because we're throwing out things that we really don't know yet, then what would it look like to be of by the end of January of 2020? What to put something together? So I'm not saying that we're going to implement it by the fall of 2020, unless it's possible. I'm not going to throw that out, but. Um, something that we can at least discuss, we have information we can start kicking around and start looking at what is it actually going to look, you know, what are possible revenue sources, what can we do, what is it actually going to, what's it actually going to cost us at a mile, two miles, five miles, whatever it is, right? I'm throwing right. Out numbers. So something to start with and then just going to take a little longer, then let's start those conversations. For them to do that, we do have, have to have agreement from from board members on that, from at least two other board members okay. on that. Um, I'm going to agree to that. I, I'm not sure the parameters that I want to put, but with that, um, and then we'll, is there a third before I start talking? Okay. Third. Yeah. With that, um, well, it's one of the things that I was concerned about a couple of years ago. Can't we just lengthen out the distance and things like that? So, what was the distance that we were doing busing from? I believe it was 2.5 miles. 2.5 miles. So maybe that could be a baseline. What would it be if we were back at 2.5 miles and then take it up to maybe 3.5 and see what that is? Is that something that sounds reasonable? Even that or even what would it cost us to go back at 2.5? Yeah, let's start at 2.5. Absolutely. See that, which is going to be pricey. It just is. But we, it would be nice to see what that price is and then see what 3.5 is. That something that would work if you actually knew the mileage that we were looking at? Yes, and, and like I said before, we also explored if it was as the crow flies or if it was within walking path di di distances. So there's a little bit of a difference with that 2.5. So, and I understand, and, and, and so I, the timeline that Mr. Jenkins is coming up with, is that an acceptable timeline or is that just putting a huge burden? Is that possible in January? For both, for walking in as the crow flies. I think that um, I can't answer that right this moment. I would have to check with our consultants and see if they, what their timeline is. I know he's just referenced six other um, people that he's working with. And so I'm, I'm hoping so, but I don't know. I don't know if I can do that by January 2020. So can we, let's say in two board meetings, one board meeting, what how much time to look into it? Just let's say that by the uh, first board meeting of October. Right. I think that I would be able to do that by bringing a contract to the board for the consultant, and then we can have a timeline associated with that. Okay, I understand that. We have a. Uh, one thing yeah. we do know is that funding that we're receiving from the state, 1983. That's when the funding that we're receiving from the statutes that the state has passed. 
So we haven't received any increased funding since 1983. And after we work all through this, it's probably gonna run three and a half million dollars to our budget minimal. So you can, if we can all figure out how to do that. And then what's it gonna cost the families? Right. To, you know, because I know that even when we were charging, what was it, $700 or $500 for each student? It, it wasn't paying for itself. So it was these are the things that we just need you're, to discuss. You're absolutely right. We, my family was part of it. It was a hefty amount. Mr. Root? Yeah, I would just, I, I know that this, this busing issue has impacted so many people, so many parents within our district uh, since uh, being taken off the table a handful of years ago. Um, I, I'm happy that we're moving in the right direction with the new buses and first off bringing the buses back from Hammett. I think that's a big start. But I also think that um, me personally, I'd like to see us move pretty aggressively towards bringing these buses back and giving the parents options for giving, giving, throwing it, you know, give it to the parents of, of options of what their their cost may be. I've I've had a lot of parents approach me saying, you know, I, I'm not rich, but let me know what it is. I, you know, I, I want to see the buses come back. I want to get my child to school safely. And I just personally, I think this has impacted so many people. I'd like to see us move aggressively towards whatever we need to do to bring it back and, and have options to present to the parents. And possibly sooner than later, if we can get either monthly or even every board meeting, some sort of update on where we're going. I see that, you know, we have unification that we talk about now. Um, on the agenda, if we can put busing on there as well to give not only updates for us, but updates for the parents and teachers as well. All right. Any other comments? Okay. Thank you very thank much. You. And, and yeah, do, thank, thank you. you for all the work. I don't want to discount the fact that uh, the compliment that was sent your way with what we were able to accomplish in such a short amount of time. We just have more questions, that's all. Thank you so much for all that work. Yeah, do we need to? A... Um, that's a good question. Oh. Yeah. Absolutely. I'll second. I'm gonna make a motion to agendize a scene at a future board meeting. All right, do we have a second? I'll second it. All right, um, all in favor say aye. Any opposed? No, no, can I ask okay. a question? Oh, I'm so sorry. I went to the vote before the questions. Go. That's okay. I'm, I'm a favor too, but can we get an actual date for board meeting? Which board meeting? Which we board said, meeting for the update or? We said for future board meetings, so there's a lot of board meetings coming. So if we get a future, an actual date for which board meeting? Um, I, I guess I'm, I'm wondering, and maybe Mrs. Worth understands, I'm, I'm wondering, because she can't get the numbers, even not certainly by January, what kind of update are you looking for? Well, we're looking for, what we're voting on to bring, to get updates and start them coming and things like that at a future board meeting, right? Okay. So what are we agendizing then if we don't have a specific date? I think we were, I thought we were agendizing, and, and thanks for clarifying, I thought we were agendizing that we were going to do what Mr. Root was saying, that we keep it on the agenda as a as a regular topic i thought that's what we were doing were we doing something else uh, that's what i did yeah. Yeah. so all future board yeah there will be the, there will be some kind of report on, on busing mm -hmm. yeah okay and do we want to start the next board meeting or do you just want to do yeah, it that's, fine yeah. Do that? yeah all right thanks Ms. Moore. all right good thank, thank you for explaining that well all in favor say aye again aye aye all opposed thanks we're going good deal thank you all right, report from MCCE President, report from the Menifee Council of Classified Employees President. At this time, the Menifee Council of Classified Employees President may report on items for information purposes only with a maximum time of 10 minutes. The Ralph M. Brown Act limits the governing board and staff's ability to respond to comments on non-agendized matters at the time such comments are made. Do we have a report? Oh, there we go. Thank you. All right, item eight, report from MTA president, report from the Menifee Teachers Association president. At this time, the Menifee Teachers Association president may report on items for information. I see it purposes only with a maximum time of 10 minutes. The Ralph M. Brown Act limits the governing board and staff's ability to respond to comments on non-agendized matters at the time such comments are made. Welcome. Good evening, good evening. So uh, 
Lee Eddy, MTA Vice President. Um, our president, Shelley Sullivan, not able to be here. Uh, she had an unexpected death. Uh, her brother, only brother, only sibling, um, died suddenly uh, earlier this week. So you're stuck with me. Um, First, I, I wanted to thank uh, Dr. Houston. This is a little bit personal, but for dropping by our school uh, today. And uh, we were so excited to have her in my class that apparently we shook the earth. <laughs> <laughs> so thank you, Dr. Houston, for that. I am uh, I'm fortunate to get to express a lot of gratitude tonight on behalf of the Menifee Teachers Association. Uh, so I've got a couple things. One, uh, we had a situation with AR at a couple of our sites and uh, there was a, kind of a little bit of a hang up with that. So we appreciate um, those of you who stepped in to help solve that, that situation for our, uh, our sites. We had a couple teachers that had paycheck glitches and we know, you know, things happen. Uh, and it's always how we respond that show what kind of uh, people we are, what kind of culture we're working under. And so thank you for fixing quickly and respectfully those paycheck glitches for some of our uh, our teachers. And um, our teachers are waiting with optimistic bated breath for uh, a joint communique on the issue of, of SPED and how that's working out with uh, with new language and uh, on our sites. So we're, we're optimistic. We're looking forward to seeing how that, uh, how that plays out. Also gratitude from our members for uh, the copy situation. Uh, thank you so much for um, doing your part to resolve that copy situation. Unfortunately, I do have to share that apparently there are sites, uh, there's at least one site, I should say, let me, let me rephrase that, at least one site um, that is not following the directive and not um, resetting copy budget. So uh, hopefully that'll solve itself. Otherwise, uh, I guess we can talk. Um, and finally, I'd like to say uh, we're optimistic that we will be uh, expressing gratitude in the future. We're very optimistic about our negotiations process that's already started. And on that note, I think I get to introduce, is, uh, is Heather Tort ready here? There she is, oh, look at that, she brought the whole team. So our, uh, our MTA negotiations chair, Heather Tort ready, and I'll turn that over to her. She has a couple things also to bring up during our time. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening, board and cabinet. Wow, we're back again for a brand new year of negotiations coming up. But it's a um, If you don't know who I am, I am Heather Tort ready the negotiating chair for our Menifee Teachers Association. My teammates here that are also at the, the table with us this season are Allison Fuentes, Justin White, Matt Clark, and Marissa Perucci. So happy to have them on our <laughs> Tonight you are in receipt of our sunshine proposal, as you know, okay? And for those in the audience who don't know what a sunshine proposal is, it's when the union submits and basically a notice of intent to bargain, and then we begin to exchange articles in the contract we wish to bargain. And so then we are in discussion, and it's been a wonderful thing having um, such open communication with our, who's on your team, the district team, as well as our team. And we really feel like that flow of communication is really flowing, we're really loving it. It's a whole new era, so I do appreciate that. Um, our bargaining team went ahead and surveyed our teachers and our counselors, our psychologists, our nurses, and our speech language pathologists. And from there, we analyzed the top concerns based on that survey. Two of those heavily weighted concerns fall under Article 14 class size that we're bringing uh, as a sunshine proposal and Article 11 hours. Class size came out um, high. And as we know with class size, we we're getting larger. Our classes are getting bigger and we know that this is not best for kids. So we'll be happy to discuss that with the table. Another area that came out is a top concern is duty, duty, um, duty time. Our teachers are really highly trained. We do a really outstanding job here in Menifee with regards to student safety. I always see a lot of teachers out on duty at every site, even if I'm visiting. And however though, uh, we're looking at excessiveness. So we wanna address that. Um, besides Article 11 and 14, we're also going to be revisiting two reopeners, which are always open, and that would be Article 8 benefits and Article 23 salaries. So I hope you're as excited as I am to get back to the table and work with you once again. Um, and our first day is next Thursday, the 19th, for the 2019-20 the school year. When did that happen? <laughs> Woo! Well, wait. Okay, so thank you, and have a good night, everybody. Woo! Thank, thank you. Thank you.
item nine, public opportunity. This is the time for members of the public to address the board about items which are not on the agenda. Agenda items may be discussed at the time they are considered by the board. The Ralph M. Brown Act limits the governing board and staff's ability to respond to comments on non-agendized matters at the time such comments are made. Public comments are limited to three minutes per speaker and 20 minutes per topic. Those wishing to address the governing board should step up to the microphone. Preference shall be given to those who have submitted a presentation from the public forum to the secretary. Personal attacks against district employees are inappropriate and do not end and not considered by the board at a public board meeting. The board has a complaint process which should be followed. The board will not respond to personal attacks against employees in a public meeting and cautions members of the public that they will be personally responsible for any remarks made. Thank you. Mm. Our first person is Brianna Hamden. <laughs> it's hard to This isn't for short people, apparently. Um, Brianna Harden, thank you. Um, I'm back again because the special ed department is still broken. So here I am last week in my IEP with the special ed director. Um, I was told on recording that I have to trust. No data, nothing. No, no measurable data, no written proof, no nothing. I have to trust that you guys can do your job to educate my kids, no proof. Um, that's a violation. I, I don't. I don't know what you guys are thinking, or maybe nobody's thinking. Um, forcing parents in IEP meetings, telling us that Menifee is proper placement. Period, is violating my kids' rights. Nothing else being presented. You're railroading the parents against our will. So either we accept a Menifee placement and that's the only thing on the table. Well, if everybody at the table is Menifee, except for the, the mom and the dad and possibly regional center or an advocate, that is being railroaded. So it's no longer, it, it doesn't constitute a team decision. That's you guys purposely shoving your directives down our throats without any choice or option. And <clears throat> when every, um, It, it's upsetting that I have to be here. I should be home. There's a reason why I, I homeschool the kids that I do homeschool, because the system isn't working. It's still broken. No matter how loudly you scream, nothing gets fixed. It doesn't matter if you're super quiet and you say nothing. It doesn't matter if you scream and curse, which I have done. <laughs> I don't want to be that parent, but it's not working. So you're trying to shove a bunch of kids that have autism let's say they're triangles, you're all forcing them into a circle shape or a square shape. That doesn't constitute faith. Something to think about. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I believe it's Francis Berumen. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening. My name is Francis Berumen. I am your only technology aide right now <laughs> in the district. Oh. Um, <laughs> I work five schools. Uh, presently, I am working 40 hours a week, which is great. Fantastic. Thank you. Um, you guys are proposing increasing our, our pay, which, is, which would put us within the realm of everyone else. But you want to increase this to 7.5 hours. We're seven hours now. And all the other districts are generally eight hours. So if you want to keep technology aids here in the district, the pay is great, but the hours would also help. So I'm asking if you would reconsider and make us eight hour employees versus the 7.5. So 
that's what I'm asking. Can you just compl uh, if you would just reconsider and make us eight hour employees instead of the 7.5 and the increase of pay would be greatly appreciated. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Item 10, action session, 10A, approval of agenda. It is recommended the governing board approve the agenda as presented. Do I have a motion? I give you a motion. Mr. O'Donnell in a second. I'll second it. Mrs. Johansson. Item 10B, approval of, uh, so sorry, let's take a vote on that. All in favor of that, please say aye. Yeah. Aye. Are there any opposed? Thank you. Motion carries. Item 10B, approval of consent agenda. It is recommended the governing board approve all items in the consent agenda as presented. Do I have a motion? Motion. Mr. Jenkins, in a second? A second. Mr. Root, all in favor, say aye. 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 Are there any opposed? Motion carries. Item 11, business and financial. 11A, August 2019, report of purchases. It is the recommendation of the superintendent and staff of the governing board ratify the report of purchases for August 2019 in the amount of $9,482,295.25 as presented. Do I have a motion? I'll give you a motion. Mr. O'Donnell and a second? I'll second it. Mr. Root, questions, concerns about this item? All in favor say aye. All right. Aye. Are there any opposed? Motion carries. Item 11B, accept the 2018-19 unaudited actuals financial reports. It is the recommendation of the superintendent and staff of the governing board accept the unaudited financial reports for fiscal year 2018-19. Do I have a motion? I'll give you a motion. Mrs. Johansson, and a second. Give me a second. Mr. O'Donnell, questions or comments? All in favor, say aye. 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 Are there any opposed? Motion carries. Item 11C, adopt resolution number 2020-44, accepting the GAN limit calculation for fiscal years 2018-19 and 2019-20. It is the recommendation of the superintendent and staff that the governing board adopt resolution number 2020-44, GAN limit calculations. I'm gonna read this very long rationale. Uh, Proposition four enacted in 1979 was designed to limit growth in government spending to occur no faster than the growth in population and inflation. This calculation known as the GAN limit applies to cities, counties, special districts, school districts in the state of California. Education code requires that California school districts annually adopt a resolution declaring that appropriation limits established for both the prior and current fiscal years will not exceed the GAN limit appropriation in each year, or if calculations show they will exceed the limit, districts must seek an increase to their limit from the State Department of Finance. The attached calculation shows the Menifee School District does not exceed the limit in either of the fiscal years 2018-19 or 2019-20. With that, do we have a motion? Mrs. Johansson in a second. Second. Um, Jenkins. Thanks. Well, Mr. Jenkins. <laughs> <laughs> Are you new? No. Anyway, any, <laughs> any questions or comments? All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. All right, item 11D, adopt resolution number 2020-45 to revise the 2019-20 budget for differences in the 2018-19 estimated and actual fund balances. It is the recommendation of the superintendent and staff of the governing board adopt resolution number 2020-45 to revise the 2019-20 budget for differences in the estimated and actual fund balances of the prior fiscal year. Do I have a motion? I'll make a motion. Mr. Root and a second. I'll second. Mr. Jenkins, questions about this item? All in favor say aye. 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 Are there are any opposed? Motion carries. Item 11E, adopt resolution number 2020-46, authorizing the commitment of revenues for specific purposes. It is the recommendation of the superintendent and staff that the governing board adopt resolution 2020-46 approving authorization, authorizing the commitment of revenues for specific purposes. 
Do I have a motion? I'll give you a motion. Mr. O'Donnell, and a second? I'll second it. This is Johansson. Questions about this item? All in favor say aye. 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 Are there any opposed? Motion carries. Item 11F, adopt resolution number 2020-47 of the governing board, acting as the legislative body of community facilities district number 2018-2 of the Menifee Union School District, authorizing the issuance of its 2019 special tax bonds. It is the recommendation of the superintendent and staff that the governing board adopt resolution number 2020-47, which authorizes the issuance by community facilities district number 2018-2 of its 2019 special tax bonds in a maximum principal amount of $9 million. Do I have a motion? Motion. Mr. Jenkins and a second? I'll second it. Mr. Root, questions about this item? All in favor, say aye. 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 Are there any opposed? Motion carries. <coughs> item 11G, approve change order request number one for the Menifee Valley Middle School Reconstruction Project Phase 2 with Hamill Contracting, Inc. It is the recommendation of the superintendent and staff of the governing board approve the attached change order request number one for $37,443 for the Menifee Valley Middle School Project Phase 2 to include alternate 2A in lieu of alternate 2B according to the bid alternate opinions. Um, we're going to take a motion first. So can I have a motion? Motion. Mr. Jenkins and a second. I'll second it. This is Joe Hansen. I think that we have this for this before the vote is that we had requested an apples to apples comparison. And so if you could present on that at this time, is that? That is correct, yes. Um, okay. If I can ask um, Brian Leonard of um, our Baker and Wiki Design Studio to come up and provide you with that apples to apples presentation that was requested last time. And with that, we're seeing the original presentation Correct, the original map compared to the last map that we just received. I think we were missing out on that last time. Correct. You had a, a series of questions about the presentation last time that we were hoping to answer. Awesome. Thank you very much for coming. So, the first slide. So, this was the original site master plan presented to you in March. Um, and so, over the next series of slides, I'm going to show you the original and then the updated. The updated will show the current state of the plans um, so that you can see that there is largely no difference in what you've seen over the course of time, save for some discrepancies that we worked out with uh, rel relevant jurisdictions. What is the red dotted line we're looking at here? That was our expected limit of work um, to show the different scopes, and that includes all of the alternates. Okay. So you'll see the blue is the, uh, the stage renovation and the expansion of the uh, music and choir. Um, the pink adjacent to the blue is the renovation of the library into special education for the Riverside County Office of Ed. And then the red to the bottom is the locker rooms, uh, which is all interior uh, renovations. And then the, uh, the dotted red line to the right um, shows the proposed scope, um, including site work. The green regions are classrooms, the purple is utility and support spaces, the orange is flex laboratories, um, and the blue is the proposed new library. So that was, this is all scope that was defined by the symposium process, and it also included um, the amphitheater, which you had asked about in uh, previous discussion, which was not included in the original proposal scope, but is part of the site facilities master plan. So the next slide shows um, the limits of work as we've uh, worked through, found conditions, uh, worked out required fire lanes and such, the proposed scope is largely the same. Um, you'll see that all the colors remain in the same spot, and we've just updated the background uh, to reflect what is currently in the plans. And this diagram was literally exported from our construction documents, so this is largely what you'll get. The next slide shows the alternates. This is the, uh, the famous orange regions. Um, these are alternates that we would be proposing as uh, options that you can choose to build or not. Um, Mrs. Johansson has a quick question. Now. Yes. Go for it. Yeah. Wait till the end. But the um, do you, so going back to the pro 
proposed and the site master plan. At yes. the very top in the middle, there's a little um, on the site master plan. What is that little green bar that's taken out on the proposed? Middle top. Middle top. There's a little green bar there. Yeah. Oh, okay. yes, that um, is a planter. Um, one of the things that we're attempting to resolve uh, that has been added to the scope is a, is a minor facelift to the administration building, just because you have a planner right to the entry of the campus. So we're demolishing that and um, doing some minor, minor finish renovations so that your administration entry actually looks like an entry. So we thought that's a big improvement. So the alternates, um, again, so th this is the original schematic alternates that we proposed back in March, and then the proposed alternates are the same. Um, so those include the stage renovation, the uh, choir and band expansion, the renovation of the locker rooms, and the shade structures. And we will, even if you continue to have uh, monies for them, we still recommend carrying them as alternates, just because it helps to have options, should something um, phasing is unchanged, and the information that we proposed in phasing those dates are we're still uh, on on path to uh, reach, and so this is the same phasing information we presented in March, and it's still consistent today. And then you had questions about the stage. Um, this is a photograph of the existing MPR, and uh, that is the gray region. It shows the operable partitions uh, that. Uh, are the stage when they're open. And so what we were proposing with the renovation to the stage is to increase that opening, we titled the proscenium. And so this diagram shows how it would be expanded from what's current to what's proposed. And so to do that, we have some minor structural work that we have to do, but it increases that opening substantially. And then the resulting framing that's required allows us to get some um, sound reflectors, which will help amplify the sound during performances. So. It's not a significant amount of work, but you'll see a big result. And um, there's also a question about whether or not the depths and the size of the stage uh, is appropriate based on our design guidelines that we routinely use for middle school um, performance spaces. The resulting stage will be uh, what's consistent for most middle schools when it's the that. And then lastly, um, since we're updating, I included a few updated illustrations. There's only three. Um, but this is an aerial of the current state of the plants. Again, this is exported largely from our construction documents. Um, so that's the aerial. This is the entry to the library. Um, you'll see the shape and the form, the location. Everything is largely consistent with where it was last time. Um, this is inside the, on the back side of the library looking to one of the academic courtyards. And then as you move more to the right, that's the academic quad and the facelift that we're doing on that electrical enclosure. So, any other further questions? That's all the slides that I have. <laughs> I think when I keep going back to the, the, the silly stage and things like that, I just have this vision of, you know, we wanted it to be like a school of the arts and things like that. And then for me, it's just a regular middle school stage. You even just basically said it's just a regular middle school stage. And, and for school of the arts, I, I feel like, and, and I realize the cost and everything, I don't know what the answer is, but it's just disappointing. Mm -hmm. um, but we're spending over the budget already. I understand that. Um, but if that's what we want to promote, we're going to kind of feel like we should have done something to promote that. So there's no question. It's just me having frustration. Yeah. All right. Any other comments that are more positive? <laughs> It's good that the schools, I mean, a lot of the rework needs to be done in these schools. The portables need to be gone. Um, I'm not that old, but I think some of them are probably gaining on my age. Um, so it all looks good. It looks good along here, but yeah, I'm kind of with you on the stage and some of the other aspects. It's good. We're getting some of the shades out there. We're still keeping those. The new classroom. So it's, it's, it's Menifee Valley has been this for such a long time. The sewer hookups, everything. So, um, I'm glad we're getting that done. It looks good. Thank you. Um, I agree. The stage is a little. The, the arts part seems to be lacking, but and it looks fantastic. And I hate to just focus on the negative. Just had a different vision. <laughs>
Uh, that's good. I will say that the value you're getting for the amount that you're spending on those specific spaces is it's high value. So. And I and I do actually appreciate that. I mean, we've all been to concerts there, and the, the stage isn't adequate. And I, I appreciate the thought of, of making it better. It, it is better. It's definitely better. Just not what I had envisioned. This is right. uh, This is not related. That's fine. Good. Let's move on to something but, else. Um, <laughs> beautiful school but I, I have visited a lot of schools where I think there's inadequate shade structures and I'm wondering I can you tell me is this gonna have adequate shade for our students or like a meeting place for them to have outdoor gatherings because it is so hot here um, even even it it's every month every month yeah, it gets yeah. very hot <laughs> and so it where is the shade going to be, or are we going to have to immediately, because I know more shade is coming to some of our sites already, but is, are we going to start off with no shade on this one? Is she uh, shade enough to us? So the, uh, <laughs> that's a great question. So the orange uh, regions in this alternate uh, component are all showing shade structures. Mm -hmm. um, also to the south side of the proposed band and choir space, there is an additional shade structure. Um, it's a lot of shade, which is manifested by the cost um, that is proposed for that. It's a lot of area. So um, we're also proposing trees in the courtyard, and those are a great natural way to provide shelter. Uh, it'll take a little while for them to grow and provide abundant shade, but um, we did have that comment come from the facility staff, and that's why those okay. ones are added. And are those, are those um, they look like they could be metal, like permanent, or they look like they could be not like sales type of things are those permanent metal structures yes they're permanent like structural steel structures okay. with um with tensile fabric and the fabric will not flutter or move they're they're permanent long-term uh, elements so. okay and because i think i don't oh shoot okay my i thought my husband's gonna make fun of me for asking this, but he brought up the trees. I thought he was gone, but he's still here. So he's gonna make fun of me for saying this. But um, since you brought up the trees, like, do we have? To, there's got to be some like science teachers or elective teachers there that would like to have some input as to the plants that we pick for this. Like, you can make some awesome like native butterfly gardens or so, I don't know, and use it for science. And I think it could be really cool. I know it's gonna be a music school. But just because they have science classes, we're, there we're still teaching other subjects. I think, I think there would be some cool, like I, I, as a science teacher, I would want to be in on that project. But anyways, that's for these guys and not for you as much. But I'd like to see that. I don't know who that goes to. <laughs> <laughs> that's team. I know all of us. I think that's valid. Small Thank you. Butterflies. I know. All right. Could be cool. <laughs> Any other comments or questions? Thank you very much for Thank the you presentation. Time. So let's go back to the item at hand. Let's see here. We had a first and second, absolutely. We are on 11G, so we're approving the change of order with that. And we had a first and second. We had a um, first and second question. We already so. had that, we had questions. So we're just looking for all in favor, say aye. Well, I just want to know on the specific for that. That was just for the change of What's the change order for? Exactly, I did miss on that one. So, yeah, so um, we, and we actually have a couple other change orders. A specific change order is for phase two of the project in which we are changing one of the alternates. Um, and so we had identified an alternate B. We are, um, actually we recommended, we're now recommending alternate A, and that's an increase of $37,000, which of course is included in our financial budget and will be reflected on our um, financial exhibit. You don't have that particular financial exhibit on the agenda item itself today because it's attached. And so we've updated, I don't know if you could please show, um, and maybe what we'll do is we'll show it on the next slide or the next phase um, because you're, you're gonna have to scroll quite a bit through this exhibit. Um, but we have had updated our financial exhibit so that what you see is what the, the board previously approved. Any allowances, the base bid, the alternate A, B, or C, depending upon the contractor. What we're asking you to approve tonight, as well as the project budget. Let's do the financial summary, please. A. Thank you. 
And again, this is just continuing to update the finance, the financial report as we share it with you based on the feedback that we receive each board meeting. I know this is small, um, but if we could focus down on the bottom, what we have on the top are our hard costs for each phase, the soft cost, and then the total. And this is what we had been embedding in our agenda items previously, in which you saw the budget at um, concept, and then we showed the budget at scope design, and then the budget at bid award, and then the financial plan of about $42 million. And so now in this particular one, you have your prior approval amount for this contract, you have your base amount, and then each of your alternates. What we're asking you tonight and we're seeing, showing that that is an increase of $37,443. We also are showing you with this particular contract, we had an allowance uh, set aside of $150,000 and that we did have one proposed change order number two of $5,521 within that allowance. And so this is um, the best way in which I felt I could summarize what we previously approved within the whole entire project, but also associated with this particular contract, so it's easy to understand and follow as we move forward. How, do, how does this compare with this additional 37,000 to the other bids that we didn't take from other companies? Are we still? Below, below. I, I, I thought so. But yes, I, yes I, we are, I don't because have all whenever there. we compared the others, we compared all of the alternates. And so what we're doing is we're looking at um, possibly removing alternates, adding, to other contracts and other phases, but whenever we take to the board originally, you see that we have the $4.7 million and we are not going to utilize one of the alternates we previously thought we were, and that's a cost difference of $37,000, but we are still below the other bidders in phase two of this project. I still don't like seeing increases. I don't get me wrong, I just trying to remember. All right, Mr. Jenkins, do you want to further questions? All right, all in favor say aye. 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 Are there any opposed? The motion's carried. Item 11H, approved change order requests numbers two, three, four, and five with O'Duffy Brothers Inc. for the Menifee Valley Middle School phase one offsite sewer connection. It is the recommendation of the superintendent and staff that the governing board approve change order requests number two, three, four, and five with O'Duffy Brothers Inc for the Menifee Valley Middle School Phase One offsite sewer connection. Do I have a motion? I'll give you a motion. Mr. O'Donnell and a second. I'll second it. Mr. Root, questions about this item? All in favor say aye. 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 Are there any opposed? Motion carries. Item 11I. Ratify agreement with SWS Engineering for surveying Menifee Valley Middle School reconstruction project. It is the recommendation of the superintendent and staff of the governing board to ratify the attached proposal provided by SWS Engineering for surveying all phases of the Menifee Valley Middle School reconstruction project. Uh, do we have a motion? A motion. Mr. Jenkins and a second. I'll give you a second. Mr. O'Donnell. Any questions about this item? All right, all in favor say aye. 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 Are there any opposed? Motion carries. Item 11J, ratify agreement number IN50229 with Riverside County Superintendent of Schools for step up to writing support services for the 2019-20 school year. It is the recommendation of the superintendent and staff that the governing board ratify agreement number IN50229 with Riverside County Superintendent of Schools for step up to writing support services and then not to exceed amount of $22,500 for the 2019-20 school year. Do we have a motion? I'll make a motion. Mr. Root and a second. I'll second. Mr. Jenkins, um, I, I have questions regarding this step up to writing $22,500. I, I am not sure what in step up to writing actually requires $22,500. So we are combining two schools together. So um, both Tawila and CKE, uh, Callie and Patrick are working together to um, have release time and training and follow-up observations and implementation of um, 
improve writing practices. So this isn't necessarily buying more materials from Step Up. It, it, it's it's paying it's to employ them and, and, and then those schools have requested it. Yes. For this, okay. The I'm actually really glad to hear time. that because honestly, I, I don't. I, I unless something else has come up from Step Up to writing from 20 years ago, I don't know uh, what else that would be. Strategies and All right. coaching. That makes sense. That makes sense. Any other questions, comments? So unique to this situation are the two schools working together and uh, which collaborating, is really cool. which I'm really excited about them. Yeah, very Thanks. nice. Thank you. Hmm. All right, all in favor say aye. 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 Is there any opposed? Motion carries. Item 11K, approved independent contractor agreement with a step in the right, a step in the right direction for the 2019-20 school year. It is the recommendation of the superintendent and staff that the governing board approve the independent contractor agreement with a step in the right direction in the not to exceed amount of $25,000 for the 2019-20 school year. Do I have a motion? Give you a motion. Mr. O'Donnell and a second. I'll second. Mr. Jenkins. Um, I'm going to read the quick summary. A step in the right direction will be available to provide functional behavior assessments and applied behavior analyst services as outlined in student IEPs. Any questions about this item? All in favor say aye. 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 Are there any opposed? Motion carries. All right, item 11L, approve independent contractor agreement with Abby N. Rosenberg for the 2019-20 school year. It is the recommendation of the superintendent and staff that the governing board approve the independent contractor agreement with Abby N. Rosenberg and the not to exceed amount of $5,500 for the 2019-20 school year. Do I have a motion? I'll give you a motion. Mrs. Johansson and a second? I'll second. Mr. Jenkins, was that you? Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. Any questions about this item? All in favor say aye. 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 Are there any opposed? Motion carries. Item 11M, approve independent contractor agreement with Autism Learning Partners for the 2019-20 school year. It is the recommendation of the superintendent and staff that the governing board approve the independent contractor agreement with Autism Learning Partners and the not to exceed amount of $5,000 for the 2019-20 school year. Do I have a motion? A motion. Mr. Jenkins and a second? I'll second. Mr. Root, questions or concerns? All in favor say aye. 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 Are there any opposed? Motion carries. Item 11N, approve independent contractor agreement with Behavioral Autism Therapies, LLC for the 2019-20 school year. It is the recommendation of the superintendent and staff that the governing board approve the independent contractor agreement with Behavioral Autism Therapies and the not to exceed amount of $25,000 for the 2019-20 school year. Do I have a motion? I'll motion it. Mrs. Johansson and a second? I'll give you a second. Mr. O'Donnell, questions? All in favor say aye. 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 Are there any opposed? Motion carries. <coughs> Item 11O, approve independent contractor agreement with Daniels and Davis Optometry for the 2019-20 school year. It is the recommendation of the superintendent and staff that the governing board approve the independent contractor agreement with Daniels and Davis Optometry and the not to exceed amount of $3,500 for the 2019-20 school year. Do I have a motion? A motion. Mr. Jenkins and a second? A second. Mr. Root, questions or comments? All in favor say aye. 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 Are there any opposed? Motion carries. Item 11P, approve independent contractor agreement with Gomez and Associates Inc. for the 2019-20 <coughs> school year. It is the recommendation of the superintendent and staff of the governing board approve the independent contractor agreement with Gomez and Associates Inc. and the not to exceed amount of $3,000 for the 2019-20 school year. Do I have a motion? I'll motion it. Mrs. Johansson and a second. I'll second. Mr. Jenkins, questions, concerns about this item? All in favor say aye. 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 Are there any opposed? The motion carries. Item 11Q, approve independent contractor agreement with Catch Talk Speech Therapy Inc. for the 2019-20 school year. 
It is the recommendation of the superintendent and staff that the governing board approve the independent contractor agreement with Catch Talk Speech Therapy Inc. in the not to exceed amount of $25,000 for the 2019-20 school year. Do I have a motion? In your motion. Mr. O'Donnell and a second? I'll second it. This is Johansson. Questions or concerns? All in favor say aye. 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 Are there any opposed? Motion carries. Item 11R, approve independent contractor agreement with Maxim Staffing Solutions for the 2019-20 school year. It is the recommendation of the superintendent and staff that the governing board approve the independent contractor agreement with Maxim Staffing Solutions in the not to exceed amount of $90,000 for the 2019-20 school year. Do I have a motion? Make a motion. Mr. Root, was that you? Yes. And a second? All second. Mr. Jenkins, questions and concerns? All in favor say aye. 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 Are there any opposed? Motion carries. Item 11S, approved modification of master agreement number IN50100 with Riverside County Superintendent of Schools for intensive behavior intervention services for the 2019-20 school year. It is the recommendation of the superintendent and staff that the governing board approve the modification of master agreement number IN50100 with Riverside County Superintendent of Schools for intensive behavior intervention services in the not to exceed amount of $25,000 for the 2019-20 school year. Do I have a motion? Give you a motion. Mr. O'Donnell and a second? I'll second it. Mr. Root, could I just get an explanation of what this is referring to? So I, I did address it. Okay. Um, and so um, I believe that the county uh, settled their union negotiation agreement. And so the cost, the rate schedule attached to the original contract changed. So every single amount went up by $5. It, to every district. I mean, to every district. Every district. Right. And our not to exceed amount did not change. It's just the rate that was attached to the contract for each different uh, position within the county changed by $5. Because of their okay. Thank you. All right, any other questions? All in favor say aye. 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 Are there any opposed? Motion carries. Item 11T, approve independent contractor agreement with Solent Health Inc. for the 2019-20 school year. It is the recommendation of the superintendent and staff of the governing board approve the independent contractor agreement with Solient Health Inc. in the not to exceed amount of $25,000 for the 2019-20 school year. Do I have a motion? A motion. Mr. Jenkins and a second? Second. Mr. Root, questions or concerns about this item? All in favor say aye. 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 Are there any opposed? The motion carries. Item 11U, approve independent contractor agreement with staff rehab for the 2019-20 school year. It is the recommendation of the superintendent and staff <coughs> Excuse me. that the governing board approve the independent contractor agreement with staff rehab and the not to exceed amount of $25,000 for the 2019-20 school year. Do I have a motion? I'll give you a motion. Mr. O'Donnell and a second? I'll second it. This is Johansson. Questions or concerns? Uh, difference on this one for Solian Health and then staff rehab. Solian Health says it provides contract with health professional and or special education service providers. And it seems like it's similar language here. Just what's the difference? I think it is very similar. It's just having access to the staff when we need it. If one company is not able to provide or if we need double on a certain day. So we're not paying each one $25,000. It's just allocated if needed. Correct. Okay. And then we, we update uh, when we renew the contract what was actually spent and what um, was allocated. Thanks. Thank you. Any other questions? All in favor say aye. 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 Are there any opposed? Motion carries. All right, we are on to item 12, action session personnel. 12A, MUSD and MTA Sunshine proposals for 2019-2020 negotiations. It is recommended the governing board accept the Sunshine proposals of the Menifee Union School District and the Menifee Teachers Association for 2019-2020 negotiations as presented. Do I have a motion? I'll make a motion. Mr. Root and a second. I'll second. Mr. Jenkins, questions? 
All in favor say aye. 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 Are there any opposed? Motion carries. Item 12B, addition of licensed vocational nurse position. It is recommended the governing board approve the addition of one six hour licensed vocational nurse position, effective September 11th, 2019. Do I have a motion? I'll, okay. give, you a mo I'll give you a second. I'm gonna go with Mrs. Johansson then for the first and Mr. O'Donnell for the second. Do we have any questions or concerns? All in favor say aye. 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 Are there any opposed? Motion carries. Item 12C, addition of RSP SDC teacher position. It is recommended the governing board approve the addition of one RSP SDC teacher position, effective September 11th, 2019. The rationale due to the increased number, increased number of special education students enrolled in Bell Mountain Middle School and new teacher is recommended to balance caseload cut overage, as well as providing the necessary push in and pull out support per IEPs. Do I have a motion? A motion. Mrs. Johansson in a second? Second. Mr. Uh, Jenkins, do we have any questions or comments? All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Item 12D, increase of a half hour and salary for the position of technology aid. It is recommended the governing board approve a half hour and salary increase for the position of technology aid from row nine to row 16 of salary schedule 216, effective September 11th, 2019. Do I have a motion? Motion. Mr. Jenkins and a second? Second. Mr. Root, do we have uh, questions or comments on this, Mr. Jenkins? Um, from what we're able to explain or tonight as we brought up tonight as well, um, either can we explain why we're not going to eight hour, or are you able to get with Ms. Bruman afterwards and discuss, or? What I can say is I just want to thank MCCE, um, as well as Ed Services and Technology, because we worked to look together collaboratively um, to identify what we could do um, to make the department competitive in our surrounding districts and <laughs> the effort to retain our employees. Awesome, thank you. So I'm sorry, that's what you can't say. So what, what we're saying is, <laughs> <laughs> so, so so what has happened with the change in this position was done with agreement of the union and just trying to get how much is the increase? So it's, it's roughly about three dollars. We can say that. So it's roughly about three dollars an hour um, in the pay scale. What we're, what we're really looking at is trying to be competitive with our surrounding districts and ensure that we're rewarding our, our, our tech aides um, and in, in the hope to retain. I mean, it's not a secret that we've had a, a high turnover in the department in the last four years. We've had 13 people come and go. And what we want to do is, to the best of our ability, keep from being a training ground um, for other districts. We want to try to provide the opportunity for our employees to stay and, and have opportunities to grow. And that's really what we're looking for with working with the unions and the tech department to ensure that we have some compatibility as we go forward. So that's really what our, our whole goal behind this was. Um, and that, that is a significant increase yes, that brings is. us from where were we kind of ranked before, would you say, in the area? Last year. Where were we? Yeah. And in, all, in all due respect, yeah, we were last. And this, and where does this put us? Now? This brings us in the com competitive middle uh, with everybody around us. Thank you. And, and also, yeah. we have one tech aid? Currently, yes. Currently, right. <laughs> What's the, uh, yeah, I know that we just uh, interviewed for a position. We have a ton of uh, candidates that came in. Um, I know they had a hard time picking between nine really highly, highly qualified candidates, and we're in the reference check stage of three um, currently. So help is coming? So help is coming. It's on its way. <laughs> and I just want to say thank you to Francis. I know what you're doing out there, and I know um, really the context in which you're working, and I appreciate everything that you do, and I know the school sites appreciate it, and the technology department does as well. And I want to recognize you personally because I understand what you're doing and how much you're helping. So thank you so much. Yes. I thought I heard a voice. Was there another comment? I, I, I'm just I'm really grateful that the district has moved to to make changes here. I think. It was needed, so I'm happy to see it. Yes. Gigi. Okay. With that, as it stands, um, all in favor of this proposal, say aye. 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 Motion carries. 
Item 11D, increase of a half hour and salary for the position of technology aid. Did I just do that? Uh, it sounded so good the first time. <laughs> Let's go to 11 or 12D. California Education Code 44256B. It is recommended the Governing Board declare that the Menifee Union School District has complied with the provisions of California Education Code 44256B, which allows the holder of a multi multiple subject teaching credential or a standard elementary credential to teach any subject in departmentalized classes to a five class or a group of students below grade nine, provided that the teacher has completed at least 12 semester units or six upper division or graduate units or coursework at an accredited institution in each subject to be taught. The authorization shall be with the teacher's consent. Do I have a motion? Make a motion. Who is that? Was that Mr. Root? Mr. Root and a second? Second. Mr. Jenkins. Um, could we have that explained? I didn't do it well enough. <laughs> no, actually, that is fantastic. No, Maybe you do. So, no, we're good. Um, we, middle school is, a, is tough in its own right, trying to identify credentials with multiple subject versus single subject. Um, we have a teacher at one of our middle schools um, who's a probationary teacher that has a multiple subject credential um, that is enrolled in classes and it has enough credits. Um, doesn't quite have single subject credential yet, but has enough credits to qualify to teach the class in a single subject setting. So this just allows her to be able to continue to teach the class. Obviously we can't do this without their consent, so I had an opportunity to have a conversation with her. She is working towards her single subject and this is right up her alley in what she wants to do. And so then the next item is, is basically the same, so you have to do it per individual. It is, but we have to vote on this one before I talk about the other one. All right, then I won't talk about it. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Any other questions? All in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Item 12F, California Education Code 44258.2. It is recommended the governing board declare that the Menifee Union School District has complied with the provisions of California Education Code 44258.2, which allows the holder of a single subject teaching credential or a standard elementary credential to teach any subject in departmentalized classes to a five class or a group of students below grade nine, provided that the teacher has completed at least 12 semester units or six upper division or graduate units or coursework at an accredited institution in each subject to be taught, the authorization shall be with the teacher's consent. Do I have a motion? I'm gonna go Mrs. Johansson, and who is the I'll second? And second with Mr. Root. Questions or concerns? Can we have this explained? Yeah, for sure. No, I guess we're not. Oh. <laughs> all, in, all in favor say it. Right. Are there any opposed? Motion carries. Item 13, action session, administrative functions, acceptance of donation, donations. to accept these donations. Give you a motion. Mr. O'Donnell and a second. I'll second. Mr. Jenkins. Um, all in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries on behalf of the students and staff of the Medical Union School District. The government will accept with gratitude the donations listed above. Thank you. Thank you. Item 18, adjourn. It is recommended the governing board adjourn at 6.40 p.m. Do I have a motion? This is Joe Hansen in a second. I'll second it. Mr. Root. All in favor say aye. 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 Are there any opposed? Motion carries. Our next meeting of the right of the board will be Tuesday, September 24th, 2019 at 5 p.m. Thank you everybody for coming. Thank you.